I have not done a vlog in forever. I used to call them vlogs. <laughs> when I did some several years ago, mm -hmm, if you know, you know, while studying abroad in China. But this time, hopefully, we'll make a much better vlog featuring Japan. It is a travel destination that I'm sure many of you have on your bucket list. It's been in the works for me for a long time, but after many years of talking about it, me and some friends decided to make that trip a reality. But quick summary though, the trip to Japan was definitely one of my favorite vacations of all time, easily top three. We spent most of the time in Tokyo and Osaka. We briefly visited Kyoto, Hakone, and Nara as well. Japan had some amazing food like of course the sushi, the ramen, but really good seafood, a lot of cool meat dishes, especially like the beef. Also amazing sites like the Mount Fuji and also just the cities themselves. Lovely people all around and the incredibly orderly and clean environment. Anyways, we landed and picked up the Wi-Fi pocket at the airport as that is the cheapest way to have unlimited data on your phone. We ordered it for 10 day use which only costed $45 per Wi-Fi pocket for 10 days. If you want to order that in advance, I rented mine through iVideo.com. Afterwards, we had to take the metro all the way to Tokyo. We got to Tokyo and into our hotel around 6 p.m. Then my boy Naoi, who is a friend that lived in Tokyo, met us at our hotel and took us to Shibuya, one of the most famous cities in Tokyo. And you could tell it was because at night, it was absolutely packed with people. The nightlife was absolutely popping, even on a freaking Monday. Shibuya's main crosswalk was just full of tourists and vloggers, streamers, and just a bunch of people just chilling in the middle when it's red light. Now he showed us around Shibuya, taking us to Japan's unique supermarket called Don Quixote. It's kind of like Walmart, but just way more pleasant feeling and homey. It had like seven floors. I think this one was like the extra large version. You'll notice that Japanese cities are all about multi-floor shops. There was a lot of really cool stuff in Don Quixote. Don Quixote had all kinds of stuff from food to clothes to toys. Everything you can possibly think of. It also had this drink called Strong Zero. I guess you can just probably find it anywhere in Japan. But it was a very cheap drink with pretty good alcoholic content and it was actually really tasty. But yeah, we drank it on an empty stomach. We hadn't eaten all day and we just, you know, got out of a 10 to 20 hour flight <laughs> and it hit us right away. It was a uh, fun time. For our first real meal, we had some sushi at a pretty solid sushi restaurant recommended by Naoi. Japanese sushi definitely hits different. Overall, the variety was much bigger and the taste was definitely more delicious had all kinds of fish uh uni and then i went straight for ramen on the side right after surrounded by businessmen letting loose the ramen was also delicious as well i got the uh, tonkotsu ramen i'm pretty sure but yeah it was a short first day and we went back to the hotel to recharge for the next day because we had a long trip ahead of us because we were going straight to osaka another city we had to get our J Rail Pass that we ordered in advance at the metro station. So there is regular metro and then there's the rail system that goes to different parts of Japan. So the JR Pass is really nice for that. Once we had the pass, it was time to ride the bullet train for a few hours called the Shinkansen. I've ridden a few bullet trains in China so I kind of knew what to expect but it was really cool to ride the Japanese ones. First day of Osaka was visiting Osaka Castle and the surroundings. It's surrounded by water, so it's like a cool molt fortress. I'm not 100% knowledgeable with the history, but it's really important to Japan's history as it relates to Nobunaga. He's kind of like one of the founding fathers of, uh, I guess, Japan. So the people that were with me during this trip was JFK was AFK, one of my friends I know from online, and Verf, the YouTuber that plays the chunk account, all kinds of accounts, and two of my IRL friends, uh, Stanley and Kat, they live uh, in New York. Later, we went to Umeda City in Osaka. We had some takoyaki as it is famous food in Osaka along the way to Umeda Sky Observatory. It's on top of this huge building with a really cool design. Honestly, Japanese architecture is so eye candy. Every building that you see just looks really cool. We camped in Osaka around the Umeda area for the next two or three days. 
So, anyways, we split up. Me and JFK and Verif were together. We tried out some Japanese McDonald's. It was really cool. They had their own local food, like a shrimp, I guess, patty? Or a shrimp burger and teriyaki burger. But I had the shrimp one. It was really good. But yeah, service in Japan is honestly a really high class. Even for fast food places like McDonald's, man. We literally had people delivering our food to our table at McDonald's. So that was pretty interesting. Then we went to a place called the Tenoji Temple. The shrine was pretty cool. You can go inside and pray for good RNG, but I didn't expect it to be like live traditional ritual stuff going on as well. It was kind of like a performance. It's happening, it's happening. There's some action here. <laughs> And also, they had a local fair as well. I bought some souvenirs like a handmade bracelet and chopsticks. We also went to a place called Shinsekai, where there were lots of arcade games, gachapon machines, and local food restaurants, and the famous Hibachi Tower. There's a lot of towers in Japan. Yo, oh, Bear's been blessed. No. He's getting no. the jar of darkness. He's getting the jar of darkness. You're a British puta. You're a British puta. Ah, wait, how am I going to get this yeah. We tried some Japanese style fried food covering chicken, of course pork called katsu. They also had fried beef and sweet potato. It was pretty good, but definitely a bit more expensive compared to most food that we've had here so far. For dinner, I went to some super non-touristy spots in the basement areas of the city. Oftentimes, there's a bunch of buildings, shops, and metros all connected to each other, and there are just a lot of restaurants. In like the most randomest of places so we ate there and almost nobody knew a lot of english in this area i do order food in japanese and, uh, this yeah, is we got, so. yeah 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 <laughs> we got no no I, we we asked what they recommended that's what she recommended yep. so there you go for our last day in osaka we visited you guessed it more temples but we visited a really cool restaurant first that served king crab alaskan in a variety of dishes we had like soup with cane crab in it like some sort of a uh, jello with cane crab in it and of course like an actual normal uh, meat dish cane crab claws with some rice and some other versions of cane crab food i'd say it was definitely worth it it was uh, 40 dollars in us but the presentation was really amazing and the service was really interesting and of course the food was pretty dang good then we visited some other temples, we got merged a bit for some Lucky Charms. Verif went pretty hard with the Lucky Charms for his, um, you know, Jar of Darkness grind on his Chunk account, so you can ask him about that. We then went to the Dontonbori district, it's like a super popular shopping district, full of expensive goods, normal goods, clothing, fashion, shopping malls. Yeah, it's one of those shopping places, kind of like a Shibuya. But yeah, really iconic, especially with the whole canal system that they got and all the big buildings surrounding it. There's also the Glyco Running Man. A lot of people like to take pictures right next to that giant uh, poster board. Then we visited a popular Japanese restaurant branch that specializes in grilling seafood of all kinds. I'm huge into seafood, so the solid selection of fish, crustaceans, and mollusks were really nice. I'd recommend it. They also do the grilling for you for the most part though, but it's cool to see it live. Here's aftermath of the battle of, of seafood. What's your rating? What's your rating? Out of 10. 8? 8? 8.7. 8.7. Okay, uh, I give it a, a, an 8. The next day, we visited Nara to go to the famous deer park and the temples there using the J-Rail. The deers were really chill and there was tons of them like everywhere throughout the park for the most part you can touch them and just kind of like you know pat them like if it's a dog some of them really do not mind it they'll let you you know just pat them for a while but a lot of them <laughs> will move away after you know you touch them like even once they do get a bit restless though if you have food on your hands because they will you know try to like uh, goat you into giving them food and they do have this weird thing where they kind of bow to you, you know? It's kind of like a little greeting thing, and uh, if you bow to them, a lot of them will bow back a few times. It's pretty cool. The deer poop, though, they're all over the place, so practice your agility and uh, avoid the fresh ones especially. 
The temples, though, at the Deer Park were especially large compared to the previous day's uh, temples. Then we dropped by Osaka again to visit more popular cities as they are close by to each other. Japan has a lot of arcade stores and buildings, so we definitely got merged a bit, just having fun messing around with all the mini games. It's a pro playing, as you can see. He's streaking on one third, one to plus streak. Hasn't failed yet. He brought us on sticks. Yeah, yeah, he brought us on sticks, man. We, we got the crappy noob sticks, you know? Right here. But this man got the real deal. Look at the streak, 200 plus. We tried Japanese Kobe beef and Wagyu beef for lunch. And it was definitely one of the most pricey things we uh, did this trip in terms of food. For example, just two small bites of the Kobe beef costed me 15 US dollars. But the Wagyu was much more affordable, and that's what we uh, ate the most of. Both the Kobe and Wagyu were delicious, but definitely Kobe was a bit tastier. Both types of meat melts in your mouth, and it has a really juicy fatty taste with a bit of sweetness to it. We wrapped up the night with some Japanese curry. It was really good too. For breakfast, we usually bought some onigiri, aka rice balls. Usually with some filling, I usually uh, get some salmon filling or some other fish filling at a convenience store uh, called Lawson or even things like 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven in Japan is super nice, uh, way better than 7-Elevens uh, in the US, for example. I will say food in general is really cheap. Even at places like 7-Eleven, you can get a pretty good full meal just using convenience store food. And the packaging, though, of the Japanese products, even at convenience stores, are always so enticing, so you end up just buying a lot. And the next day, we JR railed ourselves to Kyoto to visit some more temples. Hooray! The Kyoto temple called, I'm gonna butcher this one for sure, Iomi Zudera was pretty cool despite the rain. It's definitely the most popular uh, temple in the area. So when you finally climbed up to it, you got to see the Kyoto city view. After we went to the Kyoto craft shop, really cool specialty shop. They had a lot of uh, cool paintings, uh, swords, and other cool Japanese related crafts. I ended up buying some stuff there, some more chopsticks and a really cool Godzilla shirt. Later on, we went to the city side and tried out conveyor belt sushi. That was pretty hype. It was probably the coolest food experience I've had in Japan or in general. The sushi chefs were on point. The sushi bell constantly replenished as they worked efficiently gracefully in front of you. Some of my favorite sushi I've ever had and so much variety as well in the uh, sushi conveyor belt. I ate over 10 plates of sushi and spent about 40 US dollars. The best sushi I've had was the bluefin tuna sushi. I only had two pieces as it was uh, definitely a lot more expensive than the uh, other sushis they can get, but wow, it tastes like heaven. This is the bluefin fatty tuna, dude. He went for a second plate. God damn, we're gonna wait for him to eat his last one and see his facial expression. It is priceless. All right, here we go. This, this, this is to us. Enjoy. Live precariously. <laughs> wow! I've never seen a happier man. Oh my god. <laughs> So they simply calculate how much you pay based on the types of food that you got denoted by a different color plate or different like style plate. So basically they can just check out all your plates and then they have a little scanner machine that can tell you yeah, how much you uh, ended up eating. I obviously went for mostly the low tier ones, uh, but yeah, you gotta get that bluefin man, it's worth Next we JR rail to Harkone for the next day. Hakone is very different compared to other cities we've been to as it is very rural So I don't know if you want to even call it a city. It's probably more of a town It's also very mountainous and it's definitely not packed with people, but there's definitely tourists around Oh look at this. Oh, we're drifting Deep Traveling around there was definitely hard because it was mostly relying on buses and the bus system is not tourist free Friendly, I would say just because uh, even Google Maps like had a hard time letting us know when the buses would show up and if the bus was the right one for us. We got lost a few times on the bus because we kept going to the ones that went the opposite way. The guy literally got us to the station, right? Right? <laughs> and, and he literally waited there for five seconds and we didn't even have time to prepare and he just instantly closed the door and leaves. So now we're, we're back uh, like a station down. 
Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, paid our fee. And, <laughs> and look at Sad Boy here, you know. Sad Boy Dad. <laughs> yeah. So we're waiting for the, for the bus again to go back up. Now we will walk, but as you can see, there's really no walkway at all. And uh, it's raining and it's uphill. And we have our fucking suitcase. So, yeah, we're just gonna have to die out here, basically. So. We went to Owakudani, which is basically a mountaintop, to see a resting volcano so you can see some like minor volcanic activity. Today is a very rough day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit Yo, mine didn't break because you know why? I didn't open it. Thank God. We also tried a hot spring called in Japanese the onsen as well. It's like a sauna but much more natural and it's outside and it was a cool experience as it is basically a public bath. So we had to get naked as a group and you get to see the outside mountain view. And you also get to feel the wind while bathing in 40 plus Celsius mountain water. It definitely got quite hot in the onsen, so definitely be warned if you're not into super hot water or you have like sensitive skin. We also went to a Lawson convenience store that was promoting a show called Evangelion. I'm a huge fan of that franchise, so that was super cool to randomly encounter such a unique store. Next day, the rain stopped and we got amazing views of the mountain and the nearby Mount Fuji while using the ropeway. The ropeway is a series of lifts that carries people above the mountains and across the sea for a fairly affordable price, and you get some sick views. After we bullet train back to Tokyo to carry out the remaining days there, Tokyo definitely has the most interesting city activities to do as it contains various cities that just have their own unique cultural aspects of Japan, like Akihabara, known for its love of technology, games, and anime, Harajuku for like fashion, especially the younger teenager young adult fashion as well next we crashed at akihabara this place was the place for me because i had lots of interesting arcade buildings with crane machines and fun arcade games like taiko drum game i also had lots of shops for animes video game enthusiasts like japan's best buy called big camera i bought a bunch of pokemon souvenirs for friends and family and played a lot of crane games spent like 50 bucks and got three plushies from the crane games and they were quite big too, so it wasn't too much of a scam. Ask fair for about that. This man was like a crane master, man. The staff sometimes help you with the crane game, so it's really nice of them. Oh, let's go. Oh, you did it. No, let's go, man. Fucking did it. Holy shit, let's go. We also visited Shibuya again, but this time it was mainly to visit the Shibuya Sky Tower Observatory. The Tokyo City view was really sick at night at the observatory, but we went during the start of Golden Week, which meant a lot of tourists from Asia arrived, and it made everything super, super crowded. It was already normally pretty crowded. We then went to an all-you-can-eat Japanese barbecue. They had an all-you-can-eat Wagyu option for only $35, US dollars, so it was like easily worth it. I ate so much decent quality Wagyu for lunch and dinner combined. Overall, it was really delicious. We also tried some more convenience store food for dinner just because I don't think I could have eaten a proper dinner after that Wagyu. For our last day, we tried finishing up some last minute shopping at Akihabara and visited Harajuku in uh, Shimotsuki Tazawa. Harajuku was way too crowded to do any shopping during the Golden Week, so we just went for the Temple Park there instead. It was pretty cool. Shimokstazawa was like a really cool place. It's one of the cities to visit for like drift clothing shopping and also just if you want to feel like uh, overall 80s, 90s vibe. Definitely not a well-known tourist spot though. But you do get a much more natural Japan flavor rather than the touristy Japan flavor. And that's about it. We did a lot in 10 days and it was incredibly, incredibly fun. Shout out to Kat and Stanley for planning most of it. And to my boy JFK and Vera for tagging along and XP wasting with me in the IRL servers. Alright, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the vlogs. I know it's not RuneScape related and uh, this is definitely a rare uh, type of video that I'll be posting. But yeah, this year is all about variety, so here you go. Alright, I'll catch you guys later with some actual RuneScape content. See ya!